Hey guys, welcome to the Fish Room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip. I thought today I would do an update on how those shrimp that came in diseased are doing and also show you sort of what's going on in the fish room. I'm in the process of improving things for you guys. Um, I've taken out a rack of tanks. We're getting ready to paint and put up sort of a little area to shoot film so that I can get better sound quality. We're also going to be putting a timer on my air pump so that I can shut it off for filming and absolutely make sure that I don't forget to turn it back on. I appreciate your guys' patience thus far. So if you remember a couple weeks ago, I showed you getting in shrimp that I knew would be diseased, and I did that specifically to be able to show you guys. Um, what I ended up doing was separating into three groups, the known good group, and they are still totally fine. They've been upgraded to a 29 gallon setup with plants and stuff, and I'll show you that in a few minutes probably as well. Then I had a group that I was suspicious could get sick, and then I had a group that I knew for sure was sick. Now the group that I was suspicious of, I gave a dose of Paragard, and I watched them for the past couple weeks, and they all molted, they all seemed fine, nobody's developed any problems and a lot of the females that were buried, the babies have hatched and seem fine. So they went in with the ones that I knew were fine. Now the ones that I knew were sick, I did, I put in this little tank here and I decided to try a treatment that I generally don't recommend for shrimp. Um, initially they got a dose of Paragard because it's very, very mild and it made no difference, which I figured it wouldn't because I've tried that method before. Now Paragard is a formalin alternative, so it's a little bit gentler and it is shrimp safe. So what I ended up doing was using Quick Cure. Now this is generally not at all recommended for invertebrates. In fact, it says specifically on the bottle to not use with invertebrates. Yeah, it says do not use on baby whales, elephant nose, shrimp, snails, living rock, or invertebrates. So I knew it was going to be uh, an iffy treatment, and I knew that there was the potential for mortality, but I also knew that these shrimp couldn't be placed with other shrimp and were definitely going to die eventually anyhow. So what I did is I put in two drops because that's the dosage recommended on the bottle. Now I kept them right here so that I would look at them all the time. Uh, I did daily water changes, wiping down the glass, and I did three days of treatment, or three separate treatments, and then I've just been observing them. And out of the dozen or so that were in there, I lost three, but it appears that the other nine no longer have the allobiopsidae. However, they also look pretty lethargic, so I've still been doing daily water changes, and I added a little piece of Anubius in there for comfort. Now I will keep them in this little tank on my, in my shipping station here probably for at least another month just so that I can make sure that they've all molted and they're starting to act more normally um, because right now they're not acting very shrimpy and that's because I used a toxic med on them but I think it may have worked. And uh, Quick Cure is a combination of formalin and malachite green. Um, which are both pretty tough meds, but I need something to work. Now, you know, hopefully I'll never have to deal with this issue again, but this is the, the sort of best response I've had so far. One of the buried females in there that had the elobiopsidae, it appears that the eggs are no longer viable. I'm hoping she will molt and then be okay. Um, but again, I'm gonna keep an eye on these guys and see what happens. So these are some of the shrimp that were pre previously infected with elobiopsidae. And they're not making it super easy for me to do a visual inspection, so I'm likely going to pull them out today or tomorrow and put them in um, my little shooting tank and take a closer look. But preliminarily, it seems like it may be gone. I don't see any of the obvious green furry stuff. Now you can see 
some of the shrimp color is not very good like this one is almost black and it was not before um, I think that may be a reaction to the formalin but they don't have alabiopsidae at least not visibly so we'll continue to watch them in this tank for several more weeks and see what happens hopefully they'll be able to molt and uh, recover it's very hopeful that I have found something that seems to be working I mean anecdotally for a while they've been saying that formalin treatments would work but previously it hadn't um, so I'm not sure if it's the addition of malachite green or what but I am hopeful but you can see these guys are pretty lethargic so they're gonna keep getting lots of water changes and uh, I'm gonna try and keep things real clean for them so that they can go back to being their shrimpy selves you can see there's no evidence of elibiopsidae on that shrimp which I'm pretty geeked about And that one's actually acting pretty normal. And this was one that was really heavily infested. I mean, that was one that I was pretty sure was a goner right from the get-go. And it actually looks really good. Thanks for watching. Make sure you stop by my Facebook as well as my website, MsJinx.com, for my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. Also, a reminder that I'll be in Gaithersburg, Maryland this weekend for the big fish deal and it is a ton of fun. We have four speakers, raffles, a rare fish auction and a giant Sunday marketplace where I will be selling. Joey, the king of DIY, will also be there as one of the lecturers and he'll have his book for sale. It's a good opportunity to meet him and get it signed in person. I'll also have some copies of my book for sale as well as some livestock and I'm taking pre-orders now for this weekend.